The Quaka Breeding Project is um, an attempt to use selective breeding to breed animals that are as similar as possible in type to the original quaggas which roamed in the Western Cape. And the idea of breeding quaggas came through Reinald Ra, who was at the time the taxidermist associated with the SA Museum in Cape Town. He realized that the quagga skins were very similar in appearance to the plain zebra, but could never prove it until the advent of DNA testing which is when he sent off samples to various universities in the US and realized that the quokka was actually just a coat color aberration of the plain zebra and then had the idea to selectively breed these animals from animals that are lesser striped in the natural populations. How are we going to rebreed the quokka? We're going to do that by uh, choosing animals around the periphery of the original distribution of the quokka. It used to be in the Western Cape predominantly. So we choose animals around the edge of that distribution, which show a little bit of a tendency towards the quokka phenotype, that is the color patterning. And we chose originally in 1986, 19 animals. And over the course of about four generations, we've been breeding these animals together, choosing those which have lesser stripes over the rear part of the body. We're not using any fancy cloning techniques or genetic engineering techniques in the project. It's a very simple project of selective breeding. And now we're into the fourth generation, we have some animals which are as close to that original quokka appearance as uh, really anyone could hope for. To get involved with a quokka breeding project had little impact on what we already had. Basically, we had the infrastructure to, to house wildlife, and when we were approached to join and be part of it, it was uh, at no cost to us. In fact, we just gained the benefit of having zebra to add into our product of game viewing. As we're acting as custodians for the project, we don't derive any income from it directly from live game sales, but we do definitely generate a, a lot more income than we would from a normal zebra project purely because of the international interest and uh, of guests visiting the farm that come for game drives. Do we keep our population at between six and 10 animals on the farm? The only management that we do is to note births and deaths. Every 11 to 12 months, the mares foal. We score them and then they are put together in a file whereby it will be decided by an executive committee where these animals should go. Should they be continue being part of the project? Are their stripings good enough to be part of that? And if so, from time to time, we will be taking off animals as they become sexually mature and move them to new populations where they can continue with the breeding out of the stripes. It's important to keep a stud book of the quokkas in order to make informed breeding decisions in the project. Recording the births and deaths, photographs of the unique striping patterns, and then Prof Harley's scoring system are all tools in making the right decisions to get the, the correct animals together. I visit each uh, property on a regular basis, and then speaking to the landowners on that property is very, a very important way of keeping an eye on the animals. So observations that they make in the felt with the birth dates, the sexes of the animals and even who is in the herds, all is very important. I also spend a lot of time in the felt observing them and taking photographs of them whenever possible. Animals that don't have these traits and that are too heavily striped are periodically caught by professional game capture opera operators and then sold as zebras to generate funds for the project. One of the questions that has often been asked is, is it uh, going to be a real quacker if we get an animal which looks like one. But since nobody has any idea whether there were any adaptive features which made the quacker different from the ordinary plain zebra, uh, then to some extent it's not much of a helpful question. So I would state that if we get an animal which looks exactly like the quacker, we've got as close to getting the original quacker as anyone can reasonably expect. But to help avoid too much controversy on this issue, what we're going to do is call animals which uh, correspond to our criteria for quokka, we're going to call them Rao quokkas after Reinhard Rao, the founder. That way we're qualifying the term quokka and hope to avoid controversy in that way.
The future plans of the Quacha project are to, within the next eight years, to have completed the project. And at this point, we would like to be able to introduce a herd of Quachas to a chosen national park. Uh, we are in a partnership with national parks and the ultimate aim is to have this national herd of Quachas. Basically, it's a man-made problem with a man-made solution. We are reviving an extinct species of Quacha and that is for the benefit of our future generations to see what it looked like in the past. <laughs>